John, I went into neuroscience because I wanted to understand how the world worked. And if we understand the brain, we can understand uh, all the uh, the ways that we perceive things. And of course, very quickly, I got involved in whatever details I was working on in neurophysiology and forgot all those big questions. Uh, but as I reflect uh, over the uh, decades, uh, in terms of the whole science project about what it's all about. Uh, many would say that the only truths that can be discerned um, are scientific ones, that other aspects of uh, knowledge are opinions or views, uh, but you, you really, uh, only science can deliver uh, the kinds of truths that can be universally accepted. Um, from your perspective as a historian of science in, in all aspects, in physics and, and um, uh, various uh, of, of the leading uh, lights in, in scientific history, um, how, how can you comment on the, the proper scope of, of science and its potential limits, not, not, just, not just limits now, but limits over time, because you see those limits expanding, and can science become all pervasive? Yes, well, <clears throat> it's certainly true that, uh, that our science, which has been uh, growing for, what, 300 years, something like that, mm -hmm. 400 years in this manner uh, that we have all grown to love, uh, it does seem to have a, an ever-expanding scope which is perhaps an indication that it doesn't know everything and that it might not even be on the right track. If you consider that, uh, what, those 300 years uh, represent about a thousandth of the time mm -hmm. that uh, human beings yeah. have been adapting to the changing environment of the Earth, that we lack certain senses, we have none of magnetism, at least I don't think we can't find our way around the way the birds do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, uh, that uh, we have just discovered quantum entanglement, whatever that means, mm -hmm. and wherever it will, I mean, just in the sense of uh, our very long history, uh, where that will lead, and so on. So one wonders, accepting the notion that uh, science is perhaps the best way to get to universal truths about a certain uh, uh, subject matter, uh, whether we have the subject matter fully in hand, and if not, what changes it might make in our orientation, uh, in our science, in our basic science, our fundamental science, when we do find out these other things. That said, we must wonder whether it's possible to have another science, because consider all the effort, the money, and so forth, the brains, the work that's gone into developing our current science and the ego involvement of very intelligent people in it. How can you possibly change it? How can you orient, reorient it if that's desirable? So I would say, yes, perhaps it's the way to get at universal truths, but we don't know even what the universe mm -hmm. is. The physicists don't know what 80% uh, of the universe is made out of. They call it black matter, black energy, dark energy, yeah, yeah, dark matter. Yeah. Uh, so what is the scope of science? As big as you wish, but what is the science? That's the question. <laughs> so, so just to follow up on that, um, if it were desirable or possible to have a different kind of science, what would that even look like? Because science makes a claim that it has a scientific method, an approach, which is universally exhaustive, that it's the only way mm. to do it. It's not just what the content has been discovered now, it is the methodology of doing it that's the only way to get things. You know, scientists recognize there may be things they don't understand, maybe, you know, a fifth or sixth uh, force in matter, who, in, in matter and energy, who knows? But they have a methodology of, 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 of apprehending that that is inviolate. Maybe. And so, I like maybe, so mm -hmm. what, if there's an alternative, what would it look like? Well, I think you do me far too much honor, Robert, <laughs> to, to suggest that I would be able to redo what the, all these people and all these efforts have contrived over all these centuries. So that's the problem. That is a problem. Uh, and that we get to a, uh, a sort of a unified theory, a grand unified theory, a theory of everything, which may, right or wrong, be unreformable mm -hmm. because there just isn't enough will or effort 
to do it. So I find it fascinating that, that you, with, with all the knowledge that you learned about the, science, the history of science, are willing to admit the possibility of a different kind of science. Yes. Uh, and uh, what it would look like? No, I don't know. Uh, but we haven't even really begun to know what the IT uh, uh, revolutions are going to affect. In, in, on, information on technology, science. cognitive. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. What, what all that's going to, to mean. And so I would say, yes, uh, science might be the only way to go, mm. but it's not the only science. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, uh, although perhaps it's a little frivolous to mention it, uh, we might not be able to find out if we believe in the results of SETI, this, uh, you know, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, which, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, was funded initially by the federal government uh, to find out whether electromagnetic civilizations could last more than a few hundred <laughs> years. The idea being, if we don't get in touch with them, and they should be there, then perhaps they don't exist. Not because they hadn't existed, but because their science eventually did them in. So uh, whether that's a cautionary tale or not, uh, I don't know. But it does suggest that uh, we may not know what we're doing altogether.